Arabi Hadith and Exposition, Second Revised Edition, Author Sayyid Ruhullah Musawi Khomeini. 39th Hadith, Good and Evil, Arabic Text, English Translation. With my chain of authorities reaching up to the August Sheikh, the Pillar of Islam, Muhammad ibn Ya'qub al-Kulayni, from several of our companions, from Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Khalid, from Ibn Mahbub, and Ali ibn al-Hakam, from Muawiyah ibn Wahab, who said, I heard Abu Abdullah alayhi salam say, Verily among that which God has revealed to Musa alayhi salam and sent it down to him in the Torah was this passage, Verily I am Allah and there is no God except I. I originated the creation, and I created everything that is good, bringing it about by the hands of those that I love. So happy is he by whose hands I cause it to happen. And I am Allah, there is no God except me. I created the creation, and I created everything that is evil, and I bring it about by the hands of those that I will. So woe to him by whose hand I cause it to happen. Exposition as to the word ilah, whose related derivatives are alaha with fatha on the hamza and lam meaning he worshipped and ilahatan, it is in the sense of abada, ibadatan and ilah vowelized as fi'al. Is in the sense of the object maf'ul, that is the object of worship, like imam, which means someone who is followed. Man yu'tamu bih, ilah is the original root of Allah, and after the addition of alif and lam, that is al making it al illah, the hamza has been deleted for the sake of ease of pronunciation, and some have opined that the alif and lam substitute for the hamza. Each of these two opinions have grammatical justifications whose mention is not necessary. In the terminology of the divine sages, Ahlullah, that is the Arafah, Ilahiyat and Uluhiyat are mostly applied to the station of Tajalli at the plane of action and the station of the sacred effusion, faith al-Muqaddas. Allah is the name of the glorious one applied mostly to the station of the essence as encompassing all the attributes. At other times, the usage is reversed. In this noble tradition, it is probable that it is used in its common lexical sense, meaning, I am the worshipped one and there is no object of worship except me. And if this should be what it is meant, the limitation of worship either implies that no other being is worthy of worship besides God, though it should be worshipped mistakenly as a result of the error of men, or that on the basis of the belief of the people of heart and the urafa, worship of every manifestation is the worship of the absolutely perfect being, and that man is a seeker of absolute beauty in accordance with his God-given fitrat innate nature. Fitrat Allah allati qadr al-nas alayha It is the nature framed of Allah in which he has created man Surah 30 verse 30 And this remains true despite man's alienation from this fitra and his imagining himself to be attached to finitude and things finite or perhaps the meaning intended for Allah is the station of divinity itself in accordance with the last part of the tradition wherein he attributes good and evil to himself On this basis this would be a reference to divine unity at the plane of action, Tawheed al-Af'ali, which has been expressed on the tongue of the great sages by their saying, La mu'athira fil wujudi illallah, no one is effective in the realm of existence except Allah. Further reference to this matter will be made later on, God willing, as to al-khair, the authority of the traditionalists, Majlisi states in his commentary under this tradition. Good and evil are applied to obedience and disobedience, and to their causes and motives, and applied as well to the beneficial creatures such as grains and fruits and the edible animals, and to the harmful creatures such as poisons, serpents and scorpions, and to blessings and scourges. The Asharites say that all of these are the works of God. The Mu'tazila and the Imamiyah contradict them in relation to the works of men, and they have reinterpreted the text which state that God the Exalted is the creator of good and evil as applying to things other than the deeds of the people.
After that, he says, as to the philosophers, most of them say, nothing except God has efficiency in the realm of being. La mu'athiri fil wujudi illallah. And that the will of the creatures is the preparatory cause for God, the exalted to create the deeds at their hands. This is in accordance with the creed of the philosophers and the Asharites. And these traditions can also be ascribed possibly to Taqiyya. Here end his comments, may God elevate his station. The reality of good and evil, the attributes good and evil are applied in all instances to perfection and efficiency, in the essence or attributes of things or to their existence and perfections of existence. All that is essentially good derives from the reality of being, and when ascribed to other things, it is in consideration of their mode of existence. Also, that which is essentially evil, sharr thought, derives from non-being, Adam al wujud or from the absence of the perfection of the existence. Its application to other things, such as harmful animals and troublesome insects, is accidental. This, on consideration of all the sides, should be considered as self evident, though there are also strong arguments in its favor. Let us rake up the statement of Majlisi that the position of the Imamiya and the Mu'tazila concerning the creation of the deeds of people being opposed to that of the Asharites and is explaining away the verses and traditions that attribute good and evil to God as to the said opposition to the Asharites' viewpoint who subscribe to a creed based on Jabr, compulsion, which is contrary to reason, philosophical proofs and intuition that is correct. But the verses and traditions do not affirm the creed of the Mu'tazilites who believe in tafweed, delegation, and their creed is more invalid, disgraceful, and scandalous than the creed of the Ash'arites. As to the Imamiyya, they have adopted the true creed in the light of the guidance of the great Imams of the Prophet's family and with the blessings of the household of revelation and infallibility. It is also in agreement with the noble verses and sound metaphysical proofs in addition to being in consonance with the creed of the illustrious arafa and the gnosis of the people of the heart hence they have no need to do ta'wil of the many traditions and verses which cannot be interpreted in the sense understood by the said traditionalists in fact the imamiya and their imams do not consider the will of god to be inoperative in any of the deeds of the creatures and they do not consider the matter of anything as having been delegated Mufawad, Mufawad to the creatures. As to his statement in the latter part of his remarks that most philosophers believe that nothing except God has efficiency in the realm of being, la mu'athir fil wujudi illallah, and that this belief is in consonance with their own creed as well as that of the Asharites that is partly true and partly false. As to the statement that the words nothing except God has efficiency in the realm of being constitute the creed of most of the philosophers and the people of Gnosis, that is true. In fact, they say that should any philosopher fail to affirm this matter, it means that the light of wisdom has not entered his heart and Gnosis has not touched his inner being. But it does not imply that the creature's will is a preparatory cause for the creation of God, as is clear to those who are in the know of the matter. That this statement is consonant with the creed of the Asharites is also invalid, and what is more amazing is his putting the Asharites' creed in the same basket as that of the philosophers. This, despite the great distance that exists between them, and there has rarely been a genuine philosopher who has not opposed the creed of the Asharites and considered it as invalid. As to his statement that these traditions might possibly be ascribed to Taqiyya, firstly, there is no justifications for such an ascription, because the literal import of these traditions is in consonance with the true creed and in agreement with metaphysical proof. Secondly, these traditions are in agreement with many of the verses of the Noble Scripture. Therefore, there is no sense in ascribing taqiyya to the verses and likewise to the traditions that are in consonance with them. Thirdly, these traditions are not con contradicted by others so that one might be led by the contradiction to ascribe them to taqiyya, which is one of the grounds for preferring one group of traditions to another and they can be reconciled with those which indicate that man is the doer of good and evil.
Fourthly, according to his own statements, these traditions agree with the creed of the Asharites, which apparently was not the prevailing creed in that point. And in such a circumstance, there are no grounds for ascribing them to taqiyya. Fifthly, this topic and the like of it relate to issues of doctrine, which are not subject to the rules of preference applicable to contradictory traditions in the area of ahkam, as is evident. As to the word tuba, Jawhari says, tuba vowelized as fala is derived from tayyib, and its ya has been changed to wow due to the dam on the previous letter that is ta, according to the majma'a tuba al hum means there is good tayyib life for them and it has been said that tuba means summum bonum and the ultimate object of desire and some have said that tuba is the name of a tree in paradise it has also been said that tuba also means paradise in the language of the indians and tuba leka and tubaka are used as phrases involving genitive construction idafa it is mentioned in a tradition of the noblest messenger that tuba is a tree in paradise its trunk asal is in my house and its branch is the house of Ali alayhi salam. As the expression wailun, Johari says, way is an expression of mercy and wail expresses disapproval and Yazidi states that they have the same meaning. Wailun li zaydin wa wayhun li zaydin can be pronounced with raf on the assumption that wail and way form subjects of a nominative sentence, and also with nasab on the supposition of an elliptical verb assuming the underlying form azamahu Allahu al wail. And some say that wail is a valley in hell, so intensely hot that if a mountain were cast into it, will melt due to the intensity of its heat, and some say that it is the name of a pit in hell. The relation of good and evil to creation and the occurrence of evil in the divine ordainments. Qada. It should be known that it has clearly been established in the higher sciences that the order of being possesses the highest degree of perfection and goodness and the ultimate degree of beauty. This is demonstrable summarily in accordance with one kind of argument that infers the effect from the cause as well in accordance with the detailed exposition. Although the knowledge of its detail is exclusive to the being of its originator, hallowed by be his names or available through revelation and divine teaching. That which is appropriate for these pages at this stage as mentioned earlier is that all that which belongs to the categories of perfection, beauty and goodness does not derive except from the reality of existence because there is nothing that has reality except it and obviously that which stands in opposition to the reality of existence is either non, non-existent, note existence or essence, mahiya which are in themselves nothing and have no value being sheer vacuity or pure fancy and basically they have no subsistence until they are illumined with the light of being or are manifested through its manifestation. Neither a subsistence in respect of essence of art nor in respect of attributes and effects. Each of them that is essences come to possess manifestation, properties and effects only in the shadow of existence and only when they are touched by the hands of expansive mercy. Hence all perfections are rays of the beauty of absolute beauty and reflections of the sacred light of the absolutely perfect one. Other existence are nothing in themselves being steer poverty and absolute nothingness. Hence all perfections derived from men and belong to him. Also, it is established in its own place that which emanates from that sacred being is the real substance of being and the sheer content of existence without its being limited by limits pertaining to non-being and essence, because non-being and essence do not derive from the source of being and limitation and grace, derives from the limitations of the receiver of grace. Anyone who understands the character of the effusion and grace as explained the, by the people of Gnosis will affirm that no kind of limitation or restriction is conceivable in the divine effusion of grace. Hence, in the same way that the sacred divine essence thus is to be considered free from deficiency, contingency, and limitation, so also his sacred effusion, Fayd al muqaddas must be considered to be devoid and free from all limits of contingency, as well as contingent aspects that derive from essence and the limitation that derive from finitude and deficiency. Hence, the effusion of his grace, which is the reflection of the absolutely beautiful one, is absolute and completely beauty and perfection. Hence, he is beautiful. 
in his essence, thought, attributes, and actions, and nothing except that which is sheer being pertains to his making and creation. Also, it is established in its own place that all the evils, catastrophes, death, disease, and destructive events, and troublesome creatures, and other such things which are in this world of nature and this narrow pit of darkness arise from the interferences, interferences and conflicts between existence, not from the aspects pertaining to being, but on account of the deficiency of their ambience and the narrowness of their abode, and these derive from limitations and deficiencies which are totally out Outside the ambit of the light of creation and are in reality below making jal. The true reality is the light which is quit of all evil, defect, and deficiency. However, these defects and evils and harmful and troublesome things in respect of their defectiveness and harmfulness are not essential objects of creation, but they are accidental objects of creation in accordance with the metaphysical viewpoint because if the world of nature itself were not to exist and were it not to possess the existential aspects relating to creation its defects and evils would have been non-existent and similarly its benefit and good would not have been realized in it because they do not belong to the category of absolute non-existence, but are relative non-existences which have an accidental existence subordinate to the dispositions of things. The propositions that is derived therefrom is a modified proposition, or an affirmative proposition with a negative predicate, not a negative existential proposition, in conclusion, that which essentially derives from creation and the divine making is good and excellence and the presence of evil, harm, and other things in relation to divine providence is the position of something that is subordinate and a byproduct. To the first position refers God's statement in the noble verse, مَا أَسَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنْ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَسَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ Whatever of good befalls you, O man, it is from Allah, and whatever of ill befalls you, it is from yourself. Surah 4, verse 79. And the second position is referred to in the noble verse, قُلْ كُلٌّ مِنْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Say, O Muhammad, everything is from God, Surah 4, verse 78. And to these two considerations, there are many references in the traditions of the infallible Ahl al-Bayt salam including the sacred tradition cited here, which states that good and evil both derive from God's creation. God's carrying out good and evil actions at the hands of the servants. Reflection on the points mentioned leads one to understand the character of God's carrying out good and evil actions at the hands of creatures without its leading to the dangers of compulsion, jabr. To investigate this matter in such a way as to make it clear and to remove the doubts requires a detailed study of various theological creeds with its multifarious preliminaries whose mention is not possible in these pages. However, a brief reference to the extent appropriate for this discussion is unavoidable. It should be known that it is not possible for any existent to be independent in any of its actions unless the agent or the cause can block all the ways to non-existence facing an effect, so that if there were a hundred conditions for an existent to come into being, and the cause blocks 99 ways to non-existence facing the effect and one of the conditions remains unfulfilled, it is not possible for the cause to be independent in bringing about its effect. Hence, independence and causality depends on the ability of the cause to block all the possible ways to non-being facing the effect so that it may reach the frontiers of necessity and brought into existence. It is known on the basis of logical necessity that all beings of the contingent realms, from the beings of the highest Jabarut and the highest Malakut to the inmates of the world of nature and Mulk, with all their outer and inner powers, lack such a station. For the very first non-being facing an effect is the non-being arising from the absence of the efficient cause, and there is no existence in the realm of being which can overcome the non-being facing the effect in this respect. For that would imply a transformation of that which is contingent by essence into that which is necessary by essence and the departure of the contingent from the limits of the realm of contingency and this is impossible on the basis of rational self-evidence. Hence it is known that independence and causality requires independence in existence and this is absent among contingents.
This explanation reveals that the delegation of creation to any existence in any of the respects pertaining to existence is impossible. This is not limited to those who are religiously responsible for their actions, mukallaf, and their deeds, though such a limitation may be suggested by the usual statements of the theologians, mutakallimun. However, the generality of the issue at debate can be understood from a variety of topics. But due to the importance of the discussion concerning the actions of the Mokallafs, the debate is confined to this context in the discussions of the theologians. In any case, the debates of the theologians are of no concern to us, and our purpose is to seek and establish the truth and the impossibility of Tafwid too, and of the creatures in any matter whatsoever is obvious and known. The refutation of compulsion, Jabr, the invalidity of the creed of Jabr, becomes also known on the study. It consists of the belief that none of the ontological intermediaries have a role in the creation of existence, although one imagines them to possess such a role. It means, for instance, that fire has no role in producing heat and it has been a habit of God to create heat following the creation of the form of fire without the form of fire possessing any role in producing heat. Had the habit of God been to create cold following the creation of fire, it would not have had a form different from the present one in which it occurs. In summary, they claim that the sacred essence is the direct agent of the acts of all mukallafs without the intervention of any intermediate means. In their own fancy, they have adopted this creed for the sake of hallowing God by negating limitations in respect to him, and so as not to consider his hands as tied. Tied be their hands, Surah 5 verse 70, and cursed be they for this kind of hallowing, which implies deficiency and resemblance to creatures, tashbih, from the viewpoint of metaphysics and the creed of the Gnosis. As indicated in the preceding section, God the Exalted is absolute perfection and sheer existence and limits and deficiencies are inconceivable in his essence and attributes. That which derives from divine creation and making his absolute being and the absoluteness of the sacred effusion and it is not possible that a deficient and limited existence should emanate from that sacred essence. There is no kind of deficiency whatsoever in creation as imagined by the theologians and all limitations and deficiencies derive from the deficiency of the receiver of divine effusion and the effect and the stance proved in its own place. Hence that which relates directly to the sacred essence of God, the exalted, is absolute being in sheer existence, and that is either the sacred effusion according to the way of the Gnostics or the first immaterial intellect and the first noble light according to the creed of the metaphysicians. To explain this in other words, there is no doubt that the existence are different in their receptivity to existence. There are some existence which receive existence directly and independently, such as substances, for example, and some existence do not receive existence without the existence of something else and without subordination to another existent, such as ex accidents and things possessing a weak existence. For instance, the speech of Zayd is something which in order to exist does not receive existence except in subordination to the existence of Zayd. And accidents and attributes can have no existence without the existence of substances and the objects of which they are attributes, and they cannot exist without them. This deficiency is essential to these existence and their existential inadequacy. It is not due to deficiency in the agency and creativity of God the exalted is his station. And it is known that jabr and negation of existential intermediaries in the realm of being are impossible. Among firm arguments pertaining to this topic is that the essences mahiyat are in themselves devoid of the capacity to produce or receive efficiency, and creation does not relate to them by essence but that, as it is the reality of being which is the source of efficiency by essence, and the negation of efficiency in relation to it implies that a thing should not be what it is, hence the creation of the planes of existence devoid of efficiency and effect is absolutely impossible and implies the negation of a thing's identity with itself. In conclusion, it is known that both Tafweed and Jabr are invalid and impossible on the basis of metaphysical reasoning and rational criteria. The creed of the middle position, Amrubain al-Ma'amrain, is one which is affirmed by the way of the people of Gnosis as well as by transcendental philosophy. However, there is a great divergence of opinion among the ulama concerning its meaning.
that which is the soundest of views and most secure from controversy and more in consonance with the religion of Tawheed is the creed of the illustrious Gnostics and the people of the heart. However, this creed on every topic pertaining to the divine teachings stands in the category of simple and impossible Sahel Wamamtani, whose understanding is not possible through metaphysical argument and study and is unattainable without complete piety of the heart as well as divine security. Here. Accordingly, we shall leave it for those who are worthy of it, that is the awliya of God, and enter this valley through the road of the pursuers of rational thought, and that is to reject both tafwil, which means the independence of existence, in efficiency and jabr, which is the negation of their efficiency, and to affirm the middle position, manzila bain al manzilatain, which consists of affirming their efficiency and negating their independence and asserting that the position of the creation is like being in the attributes of being. In the same way that the existence exist without being independent in their existence and have attributes which are posited of them without their being independent, they have actions and effects which are posited of them and which emanate from them, but they are not independent in their existence and they are agents and creative causes that are non-independent in their efficiency and creativity. And it should be known as reflection on points mentioned in the preceding section will reveal that good and evil are attributable both to God and the creatures, and that both these attributions are correct. And it is for the same reason that it has been stated in this tradition that it is God who brings about good and evil through the hands of his servants. Nevertheless, all that is good is relates to good essentially with thought while its relation to the servants and the creatures is accidental. Bil-arad. The evils, on the contrary, are related to other existence, essentially, and their relation to God, the exalted, is accidental. And to this matter, refers to Hadith Qudsi, which declares, O son of Adam salam, I am more worthy of your virtues than yourself, and you are more worthy of your vices than me. Reference was made to this tradition earlier, and here we will refrain from repeating that which has already been mentioned. Walhamdulillahi, awwalan wa akhra, and praises God's in the beginning and the end.